Hello and what is up YouTube? It is I, G3 Iron, your balding bearded buddy here, back to talk some Path of Exile 2. Now, uh, in today's video, I know that we've previewed and we've teased things, but just like how Grinding Gear Games likes to give you more content than what you expected, I'm going to be doing the same thing. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about PoE 2 and what's disappointing, and we're just going to focus on a few things, okay? Just a few things. Then I'm going to hopefully do a longer, more expanded discussion about what the community is saying and feeling in the moment about Path of Exile 2 and what's confusing or disappointing about it. So in a true GGG honoring style of fashion, like here's what you were expecting and then there's more yet to come. So today, let's just focus on a couple of things that folks are chatting about and feeling coming off of ExileCon 2023. Congrats to everybody who found the typo in the other day's video. Just a couple of notes here about the things that we're gonna chat about here today, just briefly, right? And then we will see all of these things out and more played out in longer discussions yet to come. So splitting the player base is a pretty big deal. What's disappointing about PoE 2 being a separate game? It means the game will split. If you do not believe me, just give me a few moments and I will show you Chris Wilson saying that's exactly what's going to happen. But just give me a moment to get there. All right, PoE2 is now becoming a brand more than it is a game. Recognizing that Path of Exile is no longer just PoE1 and no longer even just PoE2. And we've known this since ExileCon 2019 with the joke about PoE Mobile, right? But PoE is now a brand. It really, truly is a franchise, a brand. And from a company standpoint, from a business standpoint, from a product standpoint, Path of Exile is a wild, absolute, overwhelming success, right? Like kudos to everybody who has done work at Grinding Gear Games. This is in no way an indictment of any of the work that any of the folks have done at Grinding Gear Games. Business-wise, as an industry, as a product, Path of Exile, and now as a franchise, is out of this world successful. My apologies, my computer is, is talking to me and giving me updates now. Maybe it's selling me or telling me that there's going to be a PoE 3 coming in a few years. I, I don't know. But PoE as a brand is vastly different than PoE just as a game. Path of Exile's got a mobile version that's coming out. It's got, of course, two separate games now that are taking two very distinct styles of action RPG. And at the moment, those two distinct styles are still relatively distinct, right? They're two different games, relatively two distinct speeds, relatively two distinct paths of the exile, right? Well, then you keep branching that out. Uh, we've got Ruthless. We've got solo cell phone. We've got multiple different means of playing the game. You've got standard and you've got league format. Like Path of Exile is doing to action RPGs, and again, this is not an indictment. It's doing to action RPGs what kind of Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast have done for trading card games. It's subsuming and taking on different genres and different abilities and different formats in order to continually present a, a platform for more content to be fed to an audience that is screaming and shouting for more. And in that regards, that's brilliant, but at the same time, it's disappointing. If you really only enjoy one format, let's say in Magic the Gathering, and that format's no longer necessarily getting the bulk of the attention of the developer, well, that feels bad. And the same thing is true here with Path of Exile. Becoming a brand means that your part, your expression, your structure of whatever it is that you have enjoyed of Path of Exile, and maybe frankly, what you've supported over the years, is no longer going to be the main thing. That's a big topic. We'll talk more about that uh, in the future in extended discussions, but it's something to bring up today. I've, I've read a lot of folks talking about this. I think there's at least two threads that I want to reference in the future about this. It's a big deal when people have been giving money towards a game for several years saying, we really like this game. And then a company goes comes out and goes, okay, that game has, has been supported by, let's say, 20 to 30% of our staff over the last X amount of months or years or updates, while 70 to 75% of our staff have actually been working on another game. That, as a consumer, can feel very disappointing because it means that the thing you were supporting, the game that you were playing, was actually, let's say, 70 cents to 75 cents out of every dollar was going towards a different project. 
That doesn't mean that the other project is bad. It doesn't mean that the company doesn't have a right to do that. It just means that from a, from a product playing standpoint, from a consumer standpoint, from a fan standpoint, it's understandable why fans at the moment and players inside the Path of Exile community are kind of raising their hands going, wait, uh, I thought PoE 1 and PoE 2 and PoE Mobile, I thought this was all together. I thought it was all connected somehow. And we've seen GGG is somehow able to make solo cell found work and multiple different iterations and formats of league formats become expressionable inside standard and adoptable by players. And some of them don't make it and some of them do. And so it's very, very interesting that GGG has built up this tremendous amount of rapport with the player base and with the community that loves Path of Exile to the point to go, well, if GGG said they're going to make two different games, but it's really going to be one game, it's going to be two campaigns, one game. We don't think this is going to spread out and become some massive franchise sort of thing with multiple iterations. We believe you. We, we think you can do it. And then this year at ExileCon, the answer is no. No, actually, they're two separate games. Path of Exile really is a brand rather than just a game. And that's okay. Maybe it's been that way for a long time and some of us are just realizing it and recognizing it now with ExileCon 2023. Anyway, rather than making that one beat ARPG where it's like this is the RPG. By the way, that's a that's a uh, that's got to be a typo. One best RPG. Thank you. I'm glad I read that out loud. Rather than making one best RPG. By the way, my apologies to anybody in the comments down below who saw that typo, but now you should be happy it got fixed. Rather than making one best RPG, GGG has, has branched out to say, we're going to make all the RPGs. Like, insert the comic of the guy holding up, is it a broom or something? Like, make all the RPGs. I don't know. Maybe I'll try and insert it here with a video editor, whatever. But making all the RPGs, different speeds, different drops, different reward systems, different boss encounters, different visual effects, different player options, different character options. Like, Path of Exile 2 is still Path of Exile. We talked about why that's exciting the other day, but they're distinct. Make no mistake about it. It's distinct enough that the vast majority of the development time over the last several years and manpower and women power has been put into Path of Exile 2, not necessarily into Path of Exile 1. So rather than making one best RPG, we're going to try and branch out to try and hopefully grab a bigger and a wider audience and continue. And who's, frankly, who's to stop anything like Path of Exile 3 from coming out or Path of Exile 4 from coming out or Path of Exile 5 from coming out? What happens if the vision, the long-term vision for Path of Exile is for Path of Exile to be somewhat similar to the Final Fantasy games where there's a long continuing franchise, but that franchise, that brand is recognized over multiple different iterations where there's some similar overlaps in genre, but there's new updates, there's new content, but not just content. There's new mechanics, there's new approaches, there's new stories that keep getting told. Like that, that feels a lot different rather than saying we're just going to make PoE 1 and we'll make PoE 2 that will somehow fit alongside in this Rubik's Cube that is Path of Exile. It feels different. It just does. And the announcement and the excitement and the community discussion coming away from ExileCon also feels different. Okay, no shared endgame means, well, what exactly about the PoE2 endgame? Like, a lot of the pitch at 2019 in comparison to 2023 was, hey, we want to keep one shared endgame because it doesn't make sense for Path of Exile with a decade of development and endgame theory crafting and development it doesn't make sense to make a new game that all of a sudden doesn't have any end game with it. But Path of Exile 2 now is a separate game. Maybe GGG will surprise us and go, hey guys, here's actually an end game that actually comes out whenever the game finally releases. By the way, notice we have no official release date or even projected release date for the full game of Path of Exile. We've got a closed beta that's announced for June 2024. We don't have an open beta. Maybe things go well with the closed beta and it's just a few months or a few league cycles. Maybe things go poorly and it's a year. I don't know. We just don't have any of that information um, about what it's going to look like. Maybe it's within a year and a half the game is truly free to play, which means 2025 or 2026 is when PoE2 is coming. Which that brings up another topic that we're going to handle in another video. Okay, so for everybody who likes Path of Exile at the moment or who has enjoyed Path of Exile over the last decade... 
What does that mean for not just the next league, 322, which we'll talk about in the future, but the next couple of years of leagues for POE1? Like, there's so many questions at the moment by splitting Path of Exile 1 and Path of Exile 2. It's, it's disappointing and confusing, and, and that's why we're seeing a lot of tension right now among the player base and asking questions about a whole lot of different things. So, but don't just take my word for it. Let's, let's hear it from ExileCon 2019. So let's talk about this for just a moment. This is the Path of Exile 2 announcement keynote speech from ExileCon 2019. This is a screenshot from the main stage presentation, the keynote speech. That's what they called it at that point. One game, two campaigns. This is what was announced. This is what was hyped. I hesitate to use the word promise because I don't want to make it seem accusatory like, GGG, you broke your promises and I'm angry about it. No, I'm just disappointed and confused. Four years ago, one game, two campaigns. I didn't come up with that tagline. I didn't come up with that slogan. GGG did. I understand that a whole lot of things change in development. I understand that you have to pivot. I get that. I can appreciate it. When was that change, like, when did that change occur internally? Like, maybe after 2019? What if it was before 2019? If it was before 2019, does that actually change the way how any of us feel about Grinding Gear Games and their communication? Like, I have right here on YouTube almost a decade of covering Grinding Gear Games stuff and Path of Exile stuff just here on YouTube, right? That would really, I feel like, change a lot of the way how we think about GGG. For almost a decade, I've praised Grinding Gear Games for the way how they communicate. They're top-notch, the way how they interact with their community, the way how they continually provide support and updates for their game. Whenever I've had customer service questions or problems, GGG has been fantastic about letting me know personally through emails, like asking questions and responding back. I know many other people in the community who have asked to be able to use digital assets like right now for making videos and for promoting the game and for discussing the game. GGG is very open-handed and very fair and very generous, beyond fair, generous about people talking about their game in certain ways. Not everybody's allowed to do that. There are certain um, brick style plastic uh, things that are like super duper particular about using their brand name and whether or not you're allowed to use it. GGG is not like that, right? They want everybody to talk about their game. They truly believe and truly live out. It's better to be talked about even if it's badly in a negative light than to not be talked about, right? GGG is totally fine with that. They let a lot of people have a lot of different opinions. They don't ban people for having opinions. They do ban people for how people express those opinions, but they don't ban people from for having opinions that are different from them. They actually encourage that. And so I appreciate that. So that is one really long-winded, nuanced way of saying, why did you say one game, two campaigns, if you knew prior to 2019, it wasn't going to be that way? So that leads me to the next question. Maybe, maybe Path of Exile 2 as a separate game came about after ExileCon, in discussions after ExileCon. Maybe in the development, you realized along the way, we can't do one game and two campaigns. We need to do this as two games. When did you realize that? Then how is this actually going to work out? Like, what is the extent of two separate games? Because we already know MTX stashes and purchases that have been made in PoE 1. We've been promised that those things would continue and carry over into PoE 2. This is why people are confused. This is why people are disappointed. We were also told there was one game, two campaigns. Now we're being told two games. So there's a lot of confusion in the system right now. Folks are going, yeah, you've literally said one thing. We've seen it on the screen, but now it's something different. So I'm going to be quiet for a second. I'm going to play this clip for you, and I'm going to let you tell me whether or not it makes sense why some folks would feel as though trust has been broken here. All right, so here we go. This is from the keynote speech from Path of Exile 2's announcement. The link to the full video will be down below in the uh, video notes down below. So here we go. This is the end of the preview trailer for Path of Exile 2, right as Chris came out on the stage, 2019.
Well, that feels amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Path of Exile 2 is a storyline set 20 years after the defeat of Gatava. When we finished developing 3.0, we knew that we couldn't extend Path of Exile's campaign forever. Adding more acts would make the game just too long before players got to maps. At the same time, we knew we really needed to bring the quality of Path of Exile's campaign up to a 2019 standard. We realized that we needed to make a new campaign. For years now, we've been wanting to make a sequel to Path of Exile. The problem with that, though, is that sequels split a community between two products. It's Did you hear that from Chris? Here he is in 2019. The problem with sequels is they split communities. All right. My apologies, by the way, for the skipping. Like there's a little bit of a video glitch in this particular presentation of it. That's not on my end. That's on the host of the, of the video's end. I just want you to listen to this again. Just listen to Chris again here as he's talking about two games. Path of Exile. The problem with that, though, is that sequels split a community between two products. It's also hard for a sequel to compete with the amount of content and features that the original game has. We've just spent six years making expansions for Path of Exile, so imagine if we released a Path of Exile 2 and it was just a bare campaign with none of that extra content. This would be a sad shell of an action RPG compared to the current state of Path of Exile. It would have none of the years of expansion content and improvements that make the game great. Okay, did you hear that? If you make a sequel, it will not have all of the expansion content in the end game that make a game great. Like, in this, this, we've watched less than a minute, like, of Chris talking about, hey, this is why we don't want to make two games four years ago. I don't feel like any of the arguments that he presented... And this, again, please don't, please don't make this, I'm presenting this in a really bad way. I don't want this to come out like, oh, Chris said this and I'm upset at Chris or Grinding Gear Games said this and I'm upset at Grinding Gear Games or any employee or et cetera. I'm just talking about this from a communication standpoint as a player of the game who enjoys the game as a casual player. I'm not a full-time streamer. I'm not somebody who provides for myself or my family through this game. There are several people who work at Grinding Gear Games who provide for themselves and their families by making this game. And I'm very thankful for the game and enjoy it as I've played it over the last decade. At the same time, right here, all of the arguments that Chris just made about making a separate game, they're all still valid and none of them were answered in a sufficient way at Path of Exile Con 2023. Like none of them were answered sufficiently. Um, so this is one of the reasons why people think that PoE 2's announcement here with ExileCon is is a bit disappointing. So we're creating Path of Exile 2 as a new campaign alongside Path of Exile 1 with a shared endgame. The original campaign is still fully playable, and because it's the same game, it'll still continue to be maintained with all of the updates and game system improvements that we'll make to Path of Exile. All right. So here we hear about game system updates, content updates, everything's going to be the same because it's the same game. So all the improvements that we've got scheduled for PoE 2, they're all coming to PoE 1. And so for the last four years, as we talked about the other day, any change that's come up, I've done it as well as I've read communications, other people have done it as they've read communications and discussed communications from Grinding Gear Games, there has been a wall of protection, a wall of shield. It's like a wall card, a defender card in Magic the Gathering. Like there's just been a wall as soon as any complaint has come up or any change has come through to Path of Exile 1. It came through when Ruthless came through. It came through with each and every iteration of every expansion, of every rework, of every mechanic that has happened since 2019. Well, don't worry, comes the explanation. It's probably prepped for PoE 2. And remember, PoE 2 is not going to be a separate game because that's what was announced in 2019. It's going to be the same game. And so what they're doing is they're gradually migrating and moving things from PoE 1 into a PoE 2-like environment. And now here we are in 2023, PoE 2 is a separate game. Well, what about that decade of content for Endgame? What about all that content that's changed, that's been redesigned, that's been influenced by Path of Exile 2 development, and now it's been shoved into Path of Exile 1? There's a lot of people. Again, I've got threads of these things. I don't know how many of them I'm going to be able to read. I don't know how much time I'm going to have to be able to go into this long form. There's a lot of people who are saying, hey, where's my POE 1? I'd like that back, please. Because a lot of people are going, for the last four years, every change that's come, we've still played Path of Exile because we've gone, well, maybe this is building towards PoE 2 and it's really not bad and we can adjust to it. It's exciting. Yeah, there's, there's no longer that reasoning anymore. 
That reasoning is dead. That reasoning is gone. Path of Exile 2 is a separate game. So a lot of people, justifiably, as consumers, are saying, since PoE 2 is a separate game, I would like my old PoE back, please. Here's the website. This is just a screenshot from the Path of Exile 2 uh, website, which again, there's lots of things to be excited about. We talked about that the other day. But there's a lot of things to be nervous about. There's a lot of things to ask questions about. Because in 2019, four years ago, we were promised one game, two campaigns. And again, promise is probably too strong of a word. We were teased. We were, it was promoted. One game, two campaigns, shared end game. You can choose how you want to level up. People were asking for different ways to progress their characters and get to the end game because the 10X story campaign was getting tiresome for a lot of veteran players. The solution to that, as it was presented in 2019, was two campaigns, one shared end game. Hey, we're going to change the game in a lot of ways, but it's the game that's being changed. Not a brand of games, not a franchise of games that are being broken out of this one mold or this one genre. And now we have something that's very different. We've got a brand, we've got a franchise, we've got multiple iterations of multiple different action RPGs. They're not available offline, so you and I can't play them in the iteration that you and I wanted to play them. And a lot of the time, the reason for that, um, at least understood with inside the community, was because, well, we don't want to further fracture the community. We don't want separate games to be out there. We want collective communities to be available. Well, but then private leagues came out, and you were allowed to play in private leagues as long as you paid to play in a private league. But you couldn't pay in to play in a private league that was set to certain league mechanics that were previously available. And I understand that, that, that there are massive difficulties in storing certain game states, right, and making those available to certain people. I understand that from a technical standpoint. Surely it is not more difficult and does not require more manpower than the last four years worth of work on an entirely separate game that people didn't realize they were paying to develop for the last four years while they were supposedly developing one game with two different campaigns. You can understand why the community is a bit, quote unquote, sore about this, upset about this. Confused and disappointed is, are the two ways that I would describe myself. Um, just seeing these things coming away from ExileCon, I was not, I'll say this, I was glad I was not live streaming while I was watching ExileCon 2023. I think I would not have been able to be as composed and hopefully as positive as I am presently. And even now, I'm somewhat just confused and disappointed going, re-watching stuff from 2019 and going, where is that? That's what was said was going to come and now it's not coming. And this, again, brings up this delayed date about when PoE2 is actually going to be available and playable. Like, there's a lot of discussion that took place in interviews at ExileCon that said, well, a lot of the stuff that you're seeing on camera or that you're experiencing that you're playing the game's not actually going to be like that because we're changing some things for visual reasons and for presentation purposes. Okay, that's fine. But now we've got a track record of literally saying one game, two campaigns. We're not doing that. We're actually doing the opposite. We're doing two campaigns and two games. One shared end game. Oh, actually, we're not doing that anymore. Two different end games. Okay, so how do we actually have any trust at this point that what we're seeing in 2023 is in any way going to look like what we're going to play in 2024. Those who get into the closed beta, I will probably not be in there, but those players who are in get to play it. And then those other players who are going to play the free to play version, whenever the free to play version comes out, is that going to be 2025? Is that going to be 2026? Is it going to be later in 2024? Is the closed beta going to be ready enough? So that way it really is just a closed beta just for a certain limited time. And then all of a sudden it goes live. We don't know. And again, there's a lot of mistrust and confusion and disappointment in the system. And so that's leading to mistrust and causing a lot of questions to arise. ExileCon 2023, no doubt, no doubt in my mind, raised more questions about Path of Exile 2 than it answered. And that's really interesting because Path of Exile 2, again, for four years, has taken on the expectations that it's going to solve all of the problems and all of the questions and all of the concerns and all of the feedback complaints about Path of Exile 1. And it might do that. That's actually a reason to get excited. It might do that. But it's not going to be because it's Path of Exile 1 anymore. It might solve those problems by being a different game. That's fair. And that might be something that a whole lot of players enjoy. It might also be an entirely different game that a whole lot of players don't enjoy. There's a reason why I play Path of Exile as my action RPG. There's a reason why I don't play a whole lot of other titles that are supposedly the same genre. But when I'm playing them, it's not the same. 
So what does that mean for the future? Well, that's another discussion that will be coming later on down the road as we discuss whether PoE won, like what does all this mean for Path of Exile 1 moving forward that PoE 2 is a separate game. Well, thanks so much for joining us for today's discussion. I know I've asked a lot of questions here today. I've expressed hopefully not overly dramatic um, questions and reactions to what's going on. I, I just have a lot of questions and a lot of disappointment and a lot of confusion as I look back and compare 2019 and 2023. When you put these like side by side together, one game, two campaigns, and then you just see, nope, it's a separate game. It It's pretty jarring. It's pretty jarring, especially coming from Grinding Gear games, which so often they are top-notch in their communication. They are top-notch in letting us know. So this is this is just where we're at. This is a moment in time in the history and the legacy of what I'm now going to call from now on the brand and the franchise of Path of Exile. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. How are you feeling? What's disappointing to you about information that's come out so far about Path of Exile 2? What's confusing you? Because there's a lot. There's a lot of confusion there's a lot of difference. There's a lot of distinction. There's also things to be excited about. But today, down below in the comments, I would love to invite and welcome your feedback about what are the things that are disappointing you, confusing you, or maybe I am going to use this word just because it is a Path of Exile word. Do you feel betrayed? How do you feel as though there's been a betrayal here by Grinding Gear Games? I know that's a little bit dramatic, but I think some of us as consumers who have been uh, supporting the game for a long time, there might be some of those feelings out there. So I welcome your comments down below. I'll read and react to each of them as I've got time. Thanks once again for joining us, and I look forward to continuing to discuss these things, and I look forward to playing Path of Exile 1 in the upcoming 322 Trial of the Ancestors League. I'm really excited for that league. I hope you are too, and I hope that's the league where a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.